Friday, March the 12th. Uh, since Wednesday, we've lost an additional nine people, it looks like. Uh, eight people, I'm sorry. And, uh, and then we've, we've surely got the the situation to where I reported to you that we had 168 deaths that were not properly reported to DHHR, and 84% uh, of these deaths occurred in the months of December and January. We'd had plenty, plenty, plenty of time for whether they came from nursing homes or hospitals or wherever it may be, you know, uh, to report these wonderful people and, and it just was it just was failed it, it failed in happening and uh, and in trying to be a hundred percent transparent like we always are there's surely days that I've got to come out and report to you uh, things that are not very pleasant but this and th this situation is totally unacceptable to me in every way we uh, you know they've just updated we've had 16 total deaths since last Wednesday and uh, and so just bear with me because we owe these people all this respect and I'm honored to be able to read through these, these uh, all these deaths and everything because we owe them that, do we not? But our 23rd, 131st death is a 79 year old male from Clay County. Our 23rd, 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 hundred and thirty-second death is an 86-year-old female from Kanawha County. Her 23rd, hundred and twenty-third death, a 74-year-old male from Lincoln County. Her 2334th death, a 91-year-old female from Wood County. Her 2335th death, a 79-year-old male from Hampshire County. Her 2336th death, a 75-year-old male from Mason County. Our 2,337th death, a 73-year-old male from Lincoln County. Our 2,338th death, an 85-year-old male from Logan County. Our 2,339th death, a 90-year-old female from Ohio County. Our 2,340th death, a 75-year-old male from Ohio County. Our 2,341st death, an 86-year-old male from Harrison County. And our 2342nd death, an 82-year-old male from Wetzel County. Now, I would like to report this, that as we have pushed everybody and really scrubbed the numbers, we originally reported to you that we had 168 deaths that were unreported. And we have scrubbed those numbers, and now we've revised that down to 165 that were unreported. Uh, and Dr. Amjad will be back to you later on and, and talk to you about all this. But our 2,343rd death is a 75-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2,344th death is a 71-year-old male from Mingo County. Our 2,345th death, an 88-year-old male from Berkeley County. Our 2,346th death, an 85-year-old male from Putnam County. Our 2,347th death, a 55-year-old male from Putnam County. Our 2348th death, an 86-year-old male from Greenbark County. Our 2349th death, a 78-year-old female from Jackson County. Our 2350th death, a 72-year-old female from Raleigh County. Our 2351st death, a 79-year-old male from Mercer County. Our 2352nd death, an 81-year-old male from Marion County. Our 2353rd death, a 78-year-old male from Tyler County. Our 2,354th death, a 61-year-old male from Putnam County. Our 2,355th death, a 91-year-old female from Putnam County. Our 2,356th death, a 94-year-old female from, Webster, from Mercer County. Our 2,357th death, a 92-year-old female from Wetzel County. Our 2,358th death, an 85-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2,359th death, a 67-year-old male from Jefferson County. 
our 2360th death an 81 year old male from Wood County, our 2361st death an 85 year old female from Cabell County, our 2362nd death is a 70 year old male from Wood County, our 2363rd death a 92 year old female from Greenbrier County, our 2364th death a 72 year old male from Hancock County, our 2365th death, a 67-year-old female from Tyler County. Our 2366th death, an 82-year-old male from Barber County. Our 2367th death, a 61-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2368th death, an 85-year-old female from Ritchie County. Our 2369th death, a 78-year-old female from Monongahela County. Our 2370th death, a 75-year-old male from Marion County. Our 2371st death, a 54-year-old female, I'm sorry, a 54-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2372nd death, a 93-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2373rd death, an 83-year-old male from Jackson County. Our 2374th death is a 92-year-old male from Jefferson County. Our 2375th death, an 89-year-old male from Cabell County. Our 2376th death is a 73-year-old male from Wayne County. Our 2377th death is an 85-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2378th death is a 93-year-old male from Ritchie County. Our 2379th death is a 66-year-old male from Logan County. Our 2380th death is a 74-year-old male from Tyler County. Our 2381st death is an 87-year-old male from Cabell County. Our 2382nd death is an 82-year-old female from Greenbrier County. Our 2383rd death is a 92-year-old female from Pendleton County. Our 2384th death is an 87-year-old male from Preston County. Our 2385th death is an 85-year-old male from Jefferson County. Our 2386th death is a 59-year-old male from Marion County. Our 2387th death is a 50-year-old male from Greenbrier County. Our 2388th death is a 98-year-old male from Hancock County. Our 2389th death is a 71-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2390th death is a 90-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2391st death is a 76-year-old male from Raleigh County. Our 2392nd death is a 93-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 2393rd death is a 93-year-old female from Hancock County. Our 2394th death is an 88-year-old male from Jefferson County. Our 2395th death is a 75-year-old male from Brook County. Our 2396th death is a 92-year-old female from Hancock County. Our 2397th death is a 78-year-old male from Berkeley County. Our 2398th death is a 90-year-old female from Ohio County. Our 2399th death is an 83-year-old male from Lincoln County. Our 2400th death in West Virginia is a 97-year-old male from Putnam County. Our 2400th, our 2401 and first death is an 83-year-old female from Preston County. Our 2400 second death is a 70 year old male from Fayette County. Our 2400 third death is a 66 year old male from Brook County. Our 2400 fourth death is an 80 year old female from Mineral County. Our 2405th death is a 93 year old male from Kanawha County. Our 2406th death is an 85 year old female from Monongahela County. Our 2407th death is a 69-year-old male from Marion County. Our 2408th death is an 86-year-old female from Marshall County. Our 2409th death is a 92-year-old female from Monongahela County. Our 2410th death is a 75-year-old female from Kanawha County. 
Our 2411th death is a 72-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2412th death is a 75-year-old female from Raleigh County. Our 2413th death is a 69-year-old male from Pleasance County. Our 2414th death is an 81-year-old female from Mercer County. Our 2415th death is an 82-year-old male from Tyler County. Our 2416th death is a 70-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 2417th death is a 50-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2418th death is an 81-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2419th death is an 88-year-old male from Clay County. Our 2420th death is a 92-year-old male from Greenbrier County. Our 2421st death is a 73-year-old male from McDowell County. Our 2424th death is a hundred, oh my goodness. Our 2424th death is a 102-year-old male from Wood County. God bless this great man and all these people. But 102 years old is really something. Our 2425th death is a 96-year-old female from Mercer County. Our 2426th death is a 79-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 2427th death is an 82-year-old female from Greenbrier County. Our 2428th death is a 92-year-old female from Cabell County. Our 2429th death is a 64-year-old female from Lincoln County. Our 2430th death is an 85-year-old male from Jackson County. Our 2431st death is a 71-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2432nd death is an 87-year-old male from Hardy County. Our 2433rd death is a 74-year-old female from Cabell County. Our 2434th death is an 82-year-old male from Mongahalia County. Our 2435th death is a 72-year-old male from Lincoln County. Our 2436th death is a 92-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2437th death is a 74-year-old male from Mongahalia County. Our 2438th death is a 91-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2439th death is an 89-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2440th death is a 79-year... Our 2442nd death is an 81-year-old male from Boone County. Our 2443rd death is a 61-year-old male from Roan County. Our 2444th death is a 74-year-old female from Marion County. Our 2445th death is a 92-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2446th death is a 53-year-old male from Pendleton County. Our 20, 24th, 2447th death is a 42-year-old male from Berkeley County. Way, way, way too young. Our 2448th death is a 92-year-old female from Mongahalia County. Our 2449th death is a 79-year-old female from Mercer County. Our 2450th death is a 76-year-old male from Putnam County. Our 2451st death is an 80-year-old male from Raleigh County. Our 2452nd death is a 78-year-old male from Randolph County. Our 2453rd death is an 86-year-old female from Cabell. Our 155th death is an 82-year-old female from Ohio County. Our 2456th death is a 78-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2457th death is a 70-year-old male from Ohio County. Our 2458th death is an 83-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2459th death is a 72-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2460th death is a 78-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2461st death is a 90-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2462nd death is a 75-year-old male from Marshall County. Our 2463rd death is an 84-year-old male from Mineral County. Our 2464th death is a 75-year-old female from Mingo, Mingo County. Our 2465th death is an 82-year-old 
old male from Kanawha County. Our 2,466 death is a 90-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2,467th death is a 68-year-old male from Fayette County. Our 2,468th death is a 73-year-old male from Raleigh County. Our 2,469th death is a 71-year-old male from Fayette County. Our 2,470th death is a 99-year-old female from Jackson County. Our 2,471st death is a 66-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2,472nd death is a 74-year-old male from Kanawha County. I may, I'm going to skip right back here. Our 2,471st death is a 66-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2,472nd death is a 74-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2,473rd death is an 89-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2,474th death is a 26-year-old female from Putnam County. Mm, 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 mm. Gracious. 26 years old. It's really, really sad. Our 2,475th death is a 92-year-old female from Marshall County. Our 2,476th death is a 76-year-old female from Ohio County. Our 2,477th death is an 84-year-old male from Marshall County. Our 2,478th death is a 91-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2,479th death is an 89-year-old female from Greenbrier County. Our 2,480th death is an 85-year-old male from Harrison County. Our 2,481st death is a 61-year-old male from Brook County. Our 2,482nd death is a 74-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2,483rd death is an 89-year-old male from Mongahelia County. Our 2,484th death is a 90-year-old male from Mason County. Our 2,485th death is a 91-year-old female from Brook County. Our 2,486th death is an 81-year-old female from Mongahelia County. Our 2,487th death is an 87-year-old male from Tyler County. Our 2,488th death is a 66-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2,489th death is an 87-year-old male from, uh, I'm sorry, an 87-year-old female from Putnam County. Our 2,490th death is an 87-year-old female from Kanawha County. Our 2,491st death is a 77-year-old male from Wood County. Our 2,492nd death is a 70-year-old female from Wyoming County. Our 2,493rd death is an 89-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2,494th death is an 81-year-old female from Webster County. Our 2,495th death is a 47-year-old female from Hardy County. Mm -mm. Our 2,496th death is an 88-year-old female from Wood County. Our 2,497th death is an 81-year-old female from Grant County. The 2,498th death is an 85-year-old male from Wyoming County. Our 2,499th death is an 82-year-old female from Greenbrier County. Our 25th hundred death in West Virginia is a 74-year-old female from Hancock County. Our 25th hundred and first death is an 80-year-old female from Marshall County. Our 25th hundred and second death is a 73-year-old female from Wood County. Our 25th hundred, 20, 25, 20, 2503rd death is a 58-year-old male from Kanawha County. There were eight additional deaths today, and those eight additional deaths with the eight that I read earlier from Thursday, you know, total the 16 that we've lost since last Wednesday. Our 2,504th death is a 76-year-old male from Kanawha County. Our 2,505th death is a 98-year-old female from Randolph County. Our 2,506th death is a 70-year-old male from Monongahela County. Our 2,507th death is a 56-year-old female from Brook County. Our 2,508th death is a 74-year-old female from McDowell County. 
Our 2509th death is a 78-year-old female from Morgan County. Our 2510th death is a 70-year-old male from Berkeley County. And our 2511th death is a 56-year-old female from Kanawha County. Like I said, I appreciate your prayers. And uh, I hate like crazy mistakes that are made and loved ones not respected like we should have respected them. And uh, I do not understand the mistakes, nor do I think they're acceptable. But it was an honor reading those people, and, uh, and I ask that you'll please, please, please keep all of them in your prayers. Please reach out to these families and let them know just how much you love them. You know, today is another anniversary. It marks the one-year anniversary that I, where I closed the schools, I closed the state basketball tournament, restricted visitation to our nursing homes. Today also marks the one-year anniversary since we mobilized the West Virginia National Guard to respond to this COVID-19 pandemic. You know, I could never be more grateful to all the people that have stepped up and uh, shown their leadership and their bravery, their courage, their dedication to their jobs and everything, all the great work, the guard, and all of our health communities done in every way, first responders right on down. It is amazing, really and truly, what's happened in this great state. And uh, to protect us like you have is amazing. These numbers pale in the numbers compared to what we just read. But in the last 24 hours in West Virginia, you have a daily positivity rate of 2.79. It's absolutely terrific. Your number of positive cases has gone to, is, is dropped and dropped and dropped and is now 346 in the last 24 hours. Your cumulative positive continues to fall. It's at 5.34. Your active cases are 5,280. You know, that is unbelievably down. 55 straight days, it continues to go down. Your recovered cases are 127,051. The number of hospitalized are 159. There's 59 in the ICU units, and you have no red counties. If you just pause just a second and look at that map and everything, it is unbelievable. We're getting greener and greener and greener every day, and that is great, and we want to keep that red away, and, uh, and we're doing that so far. A reminder always, if you're 65 years and, and older, I continue to remind and ask if, you're, if, you'll, if you'll just please, please, go get a test if you feel the least bit funny. Go get a test and everything. And if you happen to be positive, we can get you these antibodies that will save your life. On last Friday, we, listened, we lessened restrictions, you know, on our restaurants and our bars and small businesses and retail stores and gyms and fitness centers and more. You know, we also increased the gathering number to 100. You know, we got to maintain the social distancing and all the stuff that goes with it. But really and truly, we, we, we lifted the capacity restrictions on all these places. And, and so we're continuing to awaken back to, to full speed and to as much normalcy as we can possibly have. You know, all the guidelines are up right there, and, you know, I continue to encourage, encourage everyone to, to wear your mask and wear your mask, you know, for a, a little bit longer. It's, you know, I don't like it any more than you do, but, uh, but if you'll just continue to do that, we'll, we'll all get across this finish line together. In our vaccine distribution update, we're at 92% total administration right now for our first and second doses, and we want to always get to 100%. And, uh, 
And so that's why we continue to open up just a little bit more and a little bit more, you know, from the standpoint of broadening who's eligible to be getting these shots. Uh, to date, in the state of West Virginia, we have now given out 603,783 doses. I mean, that's an amazing amount and everything, and we continue to lead the nation in lots and lots of different categories. You know, 13% uh, of our pop total our, of our population now is fully vaccinated with both the shots. We have dropped to 12th in the world. We want to try to climb back up there if we can, but that's still phenomenal beyond belief. You know, your pre-registration and everything is, is still available to you. We've dropped the age, you know, to 50. You know, the counties that are still lagging behind, they, they pointed those out, you know, that we had as little as maybe 100 in some counties that were pre-registered. We surely need them to step up. And these counties are Gilmer, Calhoun, Clay, Work, Doddridge, Webster, Pocahontas, Grant, Pendleton, Braxton, Wyoming, Pleasance, Tyler, Tucker, and McDowell counties. We need y'all to step up, step up, and step up now. We've got 373,000 that have been pre-registered, but we need more. Our saving, our wisdom clinics continue to operate in all 55 counties. You got to watch the weather alerts and all that. But we have now put in arms on people that I keep going back. This is probably the most impacting number for me at this point in time, with the exception of just having to read through and do what I just did for a bunch of people that we lost in West Virginia, but at the same time, we didn't get reported. And I think that's just unacceptable. But there are, you know, there was a time not long ago, I've told you this many, many times, when our elderly were wondering, when in the world am I ever going to be able to get a shot? Now, that time has passed, has it not? And a lot of other states are all jumping in, and our president's jumping in, and all that. But just think, if we could go back to really going as far as getting vaccines in their arms. We have now given shots to people in, in excess of 65 years or 65 years of age and older, 207,169 individuals. And 126,300 of them have gotten their second shots. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine with all the names that I'm reading or all the ages and everything? Can you imagine if we hadn't moved? how many of those people we'd have lost? How many of those people would absolutely have been gone now? So uh, it's good stuff. The COVID vaccine hot info line is up there. There's vaccine reminders all over the place and everything. Keep wearing your mask for a little bit longer. Absolutely, you can't, get, you can't grow antlers from getting, it, getting this vaccine. It's in, incredibly safe incredibly effective. You got to take advantage of our free testing. Our free testing maps are up there. We continue to thank Walgreens and Frith for all that they've done every, every day. Get this number. We have three long-term care facility outbreaks now in the entire state. It's amazing. That number was well over a hundred. We have three, three. We also have three in our churches and we want to watch now. We can't let our churches get wild here on us. We absolutely have to watch there. Those counties are Monongahela, Raleigh, and Nicholas County. And we've got to really watch in that community. That community has done phenomenally well. Keep that pew in between you and wear that mask or just a little bit longer. Maintain that social distancing. Wash your hands and do all those things. And if you happen to be age 65 and above and you can... Just hold on just and you can get your church services online or whatever. You may really want to look at doing that for just a little bit longer. Corrections, the number is dropping substantially and everything, but we're now back to 137 inmates and 15 staff that, you know, that, you know as far as that we have at this time. The, uh, the inmate cases are down nearly by 100 from Wednesday. 
There's 136 cases at our Western Jail, and they had more than 200 on Wednesday, and we just have one case left at Southern. Okay, our face covering requirements, I've told you all about that. I ask you over and over each and every time that I come in front of you to give blood, especially if you've recovered from this dreaded disease and God above has blessed you beyond belief, give blood, give blood. You'll save a life. Yesterday we unveiled in the state of West Virginia, I'm really proud of it, I commend and Secretary Chelsea Ruby for all the great work she's done and all of her team, but we unveiled the new West Virginia Vacation Guide, a travel inspiration magazine dedicated to promoting almost heaven, West Virginia. This guide will be used over the next year to attract more and more people to visit West Virginia and see all that we have to offer. And as we continue to vaccinate our people, and as our country continues to open back up and people feel safe to travel, where do we want them to come? We want them to come to West Virginia. And this year's guide is a special edition celebrating the 50th anniversary of the release of John Denver's song, Take Me Home Country Roads. You know, what an incredible, incredible feat. That all, and all you have to do to get your free copy of the tourism, uh, you know, you can request a free copy on the tourism website on the screen. So put that back up, J uh, Jordan, and, uh, and, and people can go online, and that's it. You know, it's beautiful beyond belief, and uh, go online and look at that country road taking somebody home and, 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 and where they want to come to is West Virginia. Just an announcement, remember on Sunday, we're going back to daylight savings time. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord that we're going to go back to daylight savings time. And you will need to spring forward by setting your clocks ahead one hour on Saturday night. So, so move your clocks up an hour, enjoy the evening daylight, and uh, hopefully we're, we're on our way to a brighter, a brighter, sunshiny day in West Virginia. That's all I've got right now. All right, thank you, Governor. Let's now go to Dr. Ayn Amjad, our state health officer. Good morning. As, previ as previously noted, there were 168 uh, deaths that reported by the DHHR on Wednesday. Our EPI team has done a thoroughly um, vetted process, and we now have 165 deaths to report. Um, through our quality assurance process, we found a duplicate first and last name that were on a death certificate. So that death um, that was listed at Berkeley Medical Center was removed. So Berkeley Medical Center had no deaths to report to our um, death reporting center as far as COVID-19. Wayne Nursing and Rehabilitation Center also had two deaths, but through our quality assurance process that the EPI team was working on the, over the last two days um, was removed. So those three deaths um, is what brought us down to the 165 deaths that the governor did a report out um, just a few minutes ago. Because of the lag time in receiving death certificates, which takes up to six weeks sometimes, this is why the time is um, taking us some time to go through this. We do want to reassure everyone that this is taking place uh, over the last few days. And it is a, a manual process that our EPI team is taking with each of the facilities that was listed um, about two days ago. Um, we are also decreasing our biweekly process to a weekly process. It is a manual process that does take time, um, but we do want to reassure everyone that we are going to take the time to go through the death certificates with the facilities that was listed to make sure that these are done and fully vetted properly. We do understand that we had a lot of phone calls from all the facilities and there was a lot of concern out there, but we also want to make sure that we're very transparent with the public to make sure that we have these names of the death certificates and that we're properly reporting the, in the, the information to the public accurately. Information to the public and being transparent is what we strive to be. And we also want to make sure we get this out there as quickly as possible. At the same time, our EPI team needs the time to go through this information in, in, in a proper way. And it's a manual process. So they go through the death certificates, they call each facility, they go through the records if they need to, and they are able to vet this. But that's how we came up with the 165 names 
that the um, governor was going through. But if there's any further questions, we're happy to take those. Our team did go through numerous emails, phone calls, and with all the facilities. Um, but that's all I have. Um, if there's any questions, we're happy to take those throughout the day. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Dr. Amjad. Next to Dr. Clay Marsh, our coronavirus czar. Well, good morning. Um, I'll be brief. The governor has gone through the list of of West Virginians who have passed from COVID, and 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 really, my comments today are one of um, of both respect for these West Virginians who have died, but also just to reinforce the idea that we are not done with this pandemic yet. Certainly, we are very very proud of the great work of so many people you know, leaders uh, at the governor, the governor's office, the, the leaders of the pandemic, all the great people that are working on this from National Guard, DHHR, local health departments, and, and, and so numerous, hard to account individually. But we know that we had over 60,000 cases of COVID-19 diagnosed in the United States yesterday. We know that we have seen eight deaths um, uh, on two days, if, I'm, if I track the governor's comments correctly, and, and, and that's more than we had last week. So, so we know that, that COVID-19 is still with us. I think the governor has been very wise to not only target and focus our disciplined efforts on identifying and vaccinating our most vulnerable people, and as we see more vaccine, we will continue to make sure that we um, include more um, priority areas that um, we create eligibility for people who need the vaccination. President Biden um, is committed that by May 1st, we will be able to open up the vaccination to all Americans. And certainly we hope to be able to do that perhaps even faster in West Virginia. But we want to maintain our commitment to discipline and to make sure that we are immunizing the people most likely to be hospitalized or to die first. And so West Virginia, it's really important you continue to wear masks, you continue to physically distance and not let your guard down because while it's great and, and wonderful that we are able to open up more of West Virginia, including our great tourist industry, it is also really important to recognize that we still have been rated by Kaiser Family Foundation as the most vulnerable state related to the health of our population. And while we've done great, we want to make sure that we are finishing and across the finish line continuing to do great. So thank you, West Virginia, for all you've done. But don't let your guard down now. We're, we're and Secretary Bill Crouch with the DHHR are also joining us today and are available for questions. We'll now go to questions from members of the media. The first today from Mark Cram with WDVM. Well, good morning, Governor, and uh, certainly uh, all of you that have devoted so much time uh, to this uh, multiple times a week, simply for the transparency that uh, that the governor and each of you are are insisting on. We chatted with a, a number of individuals from Berkeley County that I know as personal friends, even my wife got her shot this week and they report that uh, they were in and out in 30 minutes, 30 minutes and their life has changed. Just, just an amazing thing. Question, as we look at the state and we see there's six counties that are uh, gold, six counties that are orange. As you move forward with this, will you be targeting or prioritizing those counties first for the next rounds of, of vaccine? And as we continue to move forward and people are starting to come out, uh, socialize more and things like that, do you anticipate that maybe counties that are currently green may occasionally flicker up into the yellow or gold uh, as you continue this good fight? Well, first of all, Clay, uh, Dr. Marsh and, and, and or General Hoyer, you know, you guys take that question and everything. You can answer that far better than I. But, uh, Mark, thank you for your kind comments and everything. And I'm really, I'm really glad things continue to move well up in Berkeley County. That's good. Clay, I'll cover the first part. Uh, so, Mark, you're right. We will continue to focus on counties primarily based on uh, the age uh, uh, population piece, and we continue to monitor that and push more vaccines to to get to that. Today, 
uh, as the governor pointed out with the numbers he gave us, we're actually at 55 percent of our population over age 65. And we know well, we've got to continue to focus that and on the over age 50 population. So you will see that uh, continue. You also see us, as the governor pointed out earlier, continue to develop more parallel paths to deliver the vaccine to include working with uh, uh, primary care health care providers, our federally qualified health clinics, our hospitals and others uh, going forward uh, to, to make more paths available to get vaccines out. Clay, I'll turn it to you. Thank you, Governor. Thank you, Jim and Mark. Thank you for your question. We do predict and anticipate that we will not see absolutely smooth sailing through each county. So we do anticipate there to be some variation in the transmission rates in counties as we continue to go forward. And so some counties may kind of, as you say, have moments of going from green to yellow or gold. Overall, we are optimistic that with the vaccines and the discipline approach that we've done, that West Virginia will continue to shine on the national stage. But it's really important that we all understand that the reason why we do what we do uh, that's that's resulted in us shining on the national stage is because we do believe very deeply in our hearts that every vaccine that is given to somebody may save a life. And so our commitment is to get as many vaccines to as many people as possible, start with the most vulnerable and continue to evolve our priority list. So in a disciplined way, we get to every West Virginian. And I think that during that time, again, so important, that even though we're opening up and things are looking much, much better, and we're so thankful, grateful for that, that West Virginia has got to be really careful and our citizens not to drop your guard right now. We're, we're at the last leg of the race, but we haven't finished the race yet. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mark. Next to Steve Adams with Ogden Newspapers. Uh, yeah, Steve Adams of Ogden Newspapers here. Um, uh, obviously, President Biden made an, a number of uh, statements and comments last night in regards to uh, the progress uh, on the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and their goals between now and May and uh, ultimately July 4th, uh, setting a goal uh, of small groups being able to, to get together for, for then. So obviously, a lot of claims made last night. I know that you were paying attention to what was said. I wanted to get your reactions to uh, the, the goals that the Biden administration has set up for, for this. And I know, obviously, we've been a, a leader, so I, I, I presume, and you'll, I'm sure you'll say it, uh, we're prepared to meet those goals as well. Thank you. Well, Stephen, thanks a bunch. Thanks a bunch for all you do all the time. Uh, but uh, I, I've, got, I've got just two or three comments, you know, First of all, I'm tickled to death, you know, of the progress that we're making, you know, from a, 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 on a national scale and absolutely elated how we're doing in West Virginia. You know, we've been through that bunch of times. We will absolutely step up. We're ready to go. You know, we're ready to go to, to whatever volume, you know, that, uh, that, that can be provided to us in supply. And we'll get it done on our end. We've, we've, we've shown that we can do that over and over and over. And, uh, the only thing that really, uh, you know, I, I, you know I, we were doing a town hall and, and then by the time we got through with the town hall and everything, I didn't catch much of it other than just seeing clips on the news later on, you know, that evening but, uh, or, or last night. But, uh, but I would say just this, the one thing that is, is lacking, you know, we, we, we want to all be supportive and respectful of our president that we have now, our president Biden. But the thing that is absolutely lacking in his tone and his speech that I do not like, and it will come back to haunt, that's all there is to it, is his lack of appreciation for, the pre for what President Trump did in many, many, many ways. You know, at a time when there's no playbook, and at a time when somebody had to act, and really he did, and absolutely, he, he very, very, I mean, in a way beyond belief, beyond all belief, 
He took us to a situation to where we have a vaccine today and we had it in months when it could have taken years. We were on a pathway six or eight weeks ago where we were losing so many people at an accelerated rate beyond belief across this country. And just what if? What if we had no vaccine? Really and truly, what if? What if that, that acceleration had multiplied to even more at this point in time? What if we were on a rate of losing millions and millions of West Virginia, of, of, rather of, 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 of Americans all across this land? Absolutely. We should always be appreciative, should we not? That's what West Virginians are. They're always, first and foremost, appreciative to others. You know, that tone that President Biden had last night, I cannot condone that, and I will not. Absolutely, I want to be supportive always of our president. From the standpoint of stimulus, I've said it over and over and over. I really think we have proven to ourselves how we have undersized, but really, when it really boils right down to it, did not this stimulus package get out of control too. We absolutely need to go big rather than small at this point in time. We've got to take care of people that are still out there by, by no fault of their own that are really hurting whether they can't pay their rent or they can't pay their power bill, whatever it may be, and businesses that are all to pieces all across this land that still are trying to recover and they've mortgaged everything they have in order to try to some way maintain the storm and get through it. Now, we need to help those, do we not? But we did not need to come in and bail out pension funds and have all kinds of pet projects and all kinds of things all across this, this, this bill and, and spend money frivolously. Now, so I'm glad that we went big rather than go small. I'm not happy that we threw money away. And more importantly than anything, I think we should always appreciate others. So from that standpoint, there was, uh, there was surely, you know, and I, and I had one more thing. Don't anyone forget that President Trump was supportive of a trillion eight hundred billion dollar stimulus package and came out in favor that that's what he wanted to get passed and Nancy Pelosi would not move. She wanted significantly more dollars than that and she would not move and this was prior to the election and the reason that they wouldn't move is just plain politics playing politics with everybody's life i'm not a fan of that either so that's my two cents Stephen. i appreciate you every day thank you buddy all right thank you Stephen. next to kenny bass with wchs and fox 11. hi thanks for taking a moment for the question Governor, I want to give credit where credit's due. West Virginia's vaccine distribution efforts led by you and, of course, General Hoyer have gone very, very well and should be congratulated. And I also think we should celebrate vaccinating more than 200,000 of our 65 plus citizens. Uh, that's a tremendous achievement. But let's not forget and let's let's make sure that we we remember that West Virginia has about 350,000 65 and older senior citizens. That means, that according to our data, about 143,000 of these senior citizens have not yet received their first shot. So while it's great to celebrate the accomplishments, don't we need to keep our eye on the ball to make sure that that population is treated as well as the previous elders who got the shot and also recognize that it just gets harder and harder to vaccinate everyone as the numbers get smaller. Let me, let, me, let me comment on the last thing you said. Harder and harder as the numbers get smaller. You're dead right. You're dead exactly on the money right. Now, but that means that we just got to step up more, does it not? The challenge may get bigger, but we absolutely step up more. Now, from the standpoint of those, I mean, you hear me every day that are over 65, pleading with them, pleading with them on two accounts, get registered, please get pre-registered. 
please sign up to where we can get you in the system and get you the shop. Please sign up. And also, you hear me every day say to them, you're not going to grow antlers from this. You're not going to have all that kind of stuff happen. Just sign up. Just sign up to where we can get you in the system and we can get you this shot. And please quit listening to this taboos out there about not taking the vaccine. You still got a percentage of people out there that truly, you know, no matter what we say, some of them are not going to take the vaccine. You know, we had, uh, let, me, let me see, they've sent me a little note here. It says, uh, we know we had some in our nursing homes that chose not to take the shot at first. And once they saw that it was all okay and clear sailing, then they signed up later on. We saw a situation in a nursing home where everybody had been vaccinated and nobody was getting COVID and everything. And all there's eight staff members that weren't and all eight out of eight of them got it. You know, so, so we see all kinds of evidence all around us of where people should sign up and they should take the vaccine. And I, and I don't, and, and one thing I want to check with General Hoyer, if General, you could step in is uh, this number of 200 and whatever thousand, you know, that have gotten their first doses of 65 and older, is that totally inclusive of all the 65 and olders all across our state that is, is in that number of 350,000? Yes, sir, Governor. And we're, we're running right now at 55% of our uh, population uh, over 65. And, uh, and we will continue, Kenny, to put parallel paths out to get people in that age group vaccinated. The governor's pressed us now to look at other ways to focus on getting over 65 uh, to take the vaccine. All right, well, thank you, Kenny. Next to Charles Young with WV News. Hi, this is Charles Young with WV News. Um, my question is for Dr. Amjad. Could you tell us a little bit more about these dialogues that you're having with these facilities? What are the officials uh, from these facilities telling you? Is there any sort of, you know, rationale or reasoning that they're coming up with to as to why this happened thank you charles most of the conversations are with our epidemiology team um, and the facilities so most of the conversations are are double checking the death certificates and the, the reporting requirements so the conversations that they're having are double checking the death certificates to medical records and if they did report them to whether it's the health departments or whether forms were filled in. And a lot of it is with education um, as well of re reporting requirements. So those are still ongoing and we wanna make sure those are vetted accurately so that everyone wants to do the right thing. Everyone wants to make sure they're reporting um, accurately um, because this is important to not only the state as well as the facilities. So. These conversations are still ongoing, but a lot of it is basically, you know, if the certificates were, um, you know, cross-checked with, with the patients, and then also if the reporting requirements are done accurately. So these conversations are still ongoing to make sure that they're accurate, but everyone does want to report accurately, but um, they're having them with our epidemiology team, and there, there's a lot of people involved with that. All right, thank you, Charles. Next to Paul Mullen with WCBC. Good afternoon, Governor. Good afternoon, panel. Uh, yesterday, I went to get a haircut at the beauty shop, and they let me go eventually. But uh, the um, the big question there, the, there were a number of uh, ladies there that have autoimmune disease or an autoimmune disorder. And they were concerned about getting the vaccine. And I said, okay, I'll throw it to Dr. Marsh or Dr. Amjad and get a good answer for you. So there you go. Okay, Doc. Well, I'll start, Ian, if that's okay. Thank you, Paul, for the question. We do believe these vaccines are not only safe for people who have immune-based diseases, but are, are very important to be considered. The, um, the autoimmune diseases that generally people identify 
um, are ones that uh, often require medicines to reduce the activity of the immune system. And, and, and therefore, people are, are oftentimes at risk for certain infections and can have more severe complications of those infections. And therefore, we are very much recommending that these people be vaccinated. Um, it's possible that if people are on medicines that suppress the immune system, that their response to the vaccine may not be quite as robust or, or as um, effective as others. At the same time, though, that we still know that these vaccines give people protection. The one, comp the one immune, uh, autoimmune or immune related disorder that people should talk to their doctors about though, and, and of course, if you have any questions, everybody should discuss with their doctors or healthcare workers um, who have complicated medical problems before they make any moves, which is always a good idea, but are people that have inflammatory problems of their, of their brain or their spinal cord or some of the nerves in their legs, a disease called Guillain-Barre syndrome. There's several others, and because of the impact of the, um, of the immune response against part of the nervous system, that's something that you definitely want to talk to your healthcare worker before you take a vaccine, although generally most people will still be able to take the vaccines and do okay. I don't know if you have anything else to add. Uh, no, thanks, Glenn. All right, thank you, Paul. Next, we'll go to Haley Kosick with Nextstar Media. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for my question, yesterday I was up in Nicholas County and I spoke with two gentlemen who were above the age of 65 and both of them had not even received their first uh, dose of the vaccine, which is, you know, the many cases uh, for those in the mountain state. Uh, with that being said, a lot of them said, for those two individuals, that they didn't know how to register to begin with they were they didn't have internet access and they just didn't even really know how to sign up for the vaccine so in situations like that what should those individuals do because it seems like there's just a disconnect there uh to even sign up and get up on that wait list for the vaccine haley is that correct haley this is governor haley you know, some way, somehow, we've got to get the word out maybe better, but, but I keep telling people, we keep telling people over and over and over, and, and it's just this, is if you, if you don't know how to get on the internet, you, you've got to, you, you just, I mean, I'm, I'm terrible on tech savvy stuff, but, but listen, all you got to do is call us. Just call somebody. Call down here. Call some, one of the hotlines that's up like crazy. Just call somebody and tell them that you're 65 plus and everything and you, you don't know how to get, you know, registered and everything and we'll get it done. We'll get it done in 10 minutes, but please just call us, you know, and, uh, and in some way, somehow, we've got to get that word out better and we'll, we'll, we'll work on a way to keep pushing that as well. But uh, Haley, you can help us. You can help us. All the news media that's on can help us. You know, all, all we got to do is just inform people that are 65 years of age and older, please, please just absolutely call us if you're having trouble getting online and, and getting registered and everything. I mean, that's a crying shame if we've got all, a, a lot of people out there that are, you know, that just can't get that, you know, figure out how to do that but need your shots. All right, thank you. Haley, Governor, I'll turn it back to you. Well... I'm, I'm really, really happy about Haley's question because, uh, you know, let's be fair again and, and just think, you know, a lot of people that are 65 or 75 years of age, you know, the, all this tech age that we're in right now just, you know, just came about long, long, long. I mean, way, they were, they were here long, long, long before that, that the tech age came about. And so a lot of people just don't know how to do it. Now we've been telling them over and over and I thought, you know, that we were really making inroads as far as telling them to just call us. But some way, Haley, if you could get those words out and everything, it'd be really beneficial to all of us and it would really, really help those and everything. But all the media, if you could take this as a lead and, and really, really help step up with that, what we need to do is have a real campaign 
to where everyone knows some methodology to just call us and absolutely we'll get them registered and we'll get their shot. The only other thing I'd add today has been a tough one. You know, when you, when you read through all those names and, and you just, you, the whole time that I'm reading, I'm thinking about stuff like, can you imagine all the people, all that they gave to so many, all the people that are mourning their loss of their death and everything? Can you imagine, can you just imagine what 165 or plus 16 that we read through today, 181 people gave to our state, gave to all their loved ones, gave to a contribution of work. Can you imagine? And, uh, and so, sure, it's tough reading the names, but it's nothing compared to the honor that we should give to all those people all the time. Keep them in your prayers, West Virginia. Keep going. You're doing good. Just hang tough for just a little longer. Thank you all now.